I went to the coolest theme party that I've ever been to this weekend. The theme was, we're getting old. And so uh, the, the idea was to dress up, you know, um, like embrace it and really, you know, dress up as your oldest, as your old self. So people spray painted, you know, spray painted their hair white and people had walkers and we wore outfits that, uh, you know, everything from the funny older outfits of like leisure suits of the 70s to some people will have thought about like, what would I look like? What would I dress like when I was older? Um, and, uh, and it was, at first I was like, you know, it, it, is this ageism? You know, is this, are we making fun of old people? And I was like, not, it doesn't feel that way. It feels like we are embracing ourselves in our older selves. Um, and so it kind of took some of the, the dangerous aspects of certain theme parties. Certain, you know, dress up in certain themes or certain dress up days at school. It's like, ooh, no, you, you, can't, you can't do Cowboys and Indians anymore. Ooh, no, you can't do that. Uh, ooh, toga party, ooh, careful, careful. There's a lot of themes that, that danger into cultural appropriation or insensitivity um, with other cultures. But you old is your culture. It's just you in a different place on your timeline. And so that was one part that made it fun. You could really, and people went off. Like if you went to this party and you were not dressed up, you, it was awkward. I'll say it. If you were there and you were just walking around, I mean, people actually would make funny. They're like, like, oh my goodness, you haven't changed a bit. What are you eating? Oh my goodness. You look, uh, you look phenomenal. Um, and we, so when we got there, the host and hostess, the, well, the hostess of the party, she dressed up like a naughty nurse. So... There were, there were a number of people that were like naughty nurses, and that, that was men and women uh, in like super sexy nurse outfits. And then everyone else was the residents of the old people home. And so we, they got, we got there and they checked you in, they asked you all these questionnaires, and uh, took your picture and gave you a name tag. I, I chose to be Leonard. Um, and, and for some reason, I stayed in character until four in the morning where I was using a walker, I was doing like improv stand up in my in my old Jewish man voice, which you know I, I, my grandpa was an old Jewish man, not Grandpa Caleb, Grandpa John, and um, uh, and so I'd be like, "What? What's your name?" And I'm like, "Sonny, Sonny, come here. I, I, I want to do something." I'm like, "What? My son's here. Who's here?" And we just and we just kept having fun with it. Myrtle, Myrtle, come here. Myrtle, hey. So, did you see this cane? This. Gentleman's got a cane. You don't want to mess with Myrtle. These people today, the kids, don't worry about the kids. I'll, yeah. I'll cut them all. <laughs> and then as the night got into the three, four o'clock in the morning, then it was kind of awesome to have a walker as you're walking around the party. So, and they had, you know, candies and little cups they would hand out and, uh, Oh, it was so much fun. So, um, bravo to uh, Heidi and Shogi for hosting an a, a incredible party. And um, bravo to all the participants who embraced it wholeheartedly in appearance and demeanor. I mean, the dance floor, the dance floor was filled with people <laughs> like this, with walkers going... <laughs> holding their canes up and stuff. So, you know, all I'm saying is, bravo, it was fun. It was fun enough that I wanted to share it with you and tell you about this, this gathering. Um, and the other thing that, about the theme that was really beautiful was that it put you sometimes into the perspective of a final chapter of life. So even as we're having fun, I was involved with so many conversations about aging and about dying and, and about our grandparents. Told stories about my grandpa all night long. Talked about death with a number of people. And, and death was on people's minds, um, you know, because of things that happened at this year's Burning Man. And I, I talked to people who this year's Burning Man, as well as this theme party, had brought to front of mind stories and experiences that they had around death that had either been healing or challenging or some of them that were unresolved. And so 
even within all of this whimsy, we were having this opportunity to really go deep. Um, it was beautiful. And it, you know, I, I, lately I've just so much had my grandpa on my mind. Um, the video that I'm putting online right now that I hope you watch the most important Burning Man video on the internet is really mostly about my grandpa uh, and about how he was this example of how when you live your life according to your ideals, then you, you are wealthy. And when it comes time to, for your life to get close to the end, you are in a place of, of joy and fearlessness and that what we need to push ourselves to do is be our highest selves on a daily basis because the, the, what you get in return for that is that peace, is that knowledge that my grandpa demonstrated at end of life of the, 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 the result of a year uh, or a lifetime of ripples of love coming back to you by the end of your life is something so profound that no amount of money, no amount of prestige, nothing that you can acquire in life will come close to the rewards of a life well lived. Please subscribe to the Hug Nation YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook. You can check out Halcyon Pink on Instagram or just listen to the wind and I'll be there. I love you. If you enjoy this, share it with a friend, an open-hearted person who might be part of our wonderful collective Hug Nation family.